My name is Jen Kay, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Colorado. In this video, we'll talk about cryospheric processes in polar regions. The extreme cold found in the polar regions leads to physical processes not found at other latitudes. For example, the ocean can freeze, forming what is called sea ice. Polar bears live on the sea ice, and they use sea ice as a platform to hunt seals, their primary food source. The extreme cold also enables the formation of land ice. Land ice forms when snow compacts and turns into ice. When ice formation keeps pace with melting, land ice is stable. People also live in the polar regions. In fact, the Arctic Ocean is the garden for many polar communities who hunt whales and polar bears. Polar regions may seem far away, but they're an important part of the climate system. The cryosphere includes all things frozen, such as glaciers, snow, and frozen ground, or permafrost. The largest glaciers on the planet are part of the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. Sea ice is found only in the polar regions, where it is cold enough that the oceans can freeze. One of the lowest latitudes where sea ice and polar bears are found is in Churchill, Manitoba. Churchill has a very continental climate with relatively harsh winters and warm summers for its latitude. Churchill is on the shores of Hudson Bay. Hudson Bay is seasonally covered with sea ice. During summer, there's open water. But during the winter, the Hudson Bay freezes and forms sea ice. Right now it's fall, so the sea ice is about to form, starting along the shore. And polar bears are everywhere during the fall. Churchill is a place where sea ice forms first because the Churchill River flows into Hudson Bay. The freezing temperature of salty water is lower than the freezing temperature of fresh water. Churchill River is fresh water. Its freezing temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Hudson Bay is salty water. Its freezing temperature is negative two degrees Celsius. As a result, the sea ice forms first where Churchill River flows into Hudson Bay. It makes it a really interesting place to study sea ice and polar bears. When it warms, the cryosphere is particularly vulnerable because ice can melt. The globe has warmed over the last hundred years due to increased greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Arctic sea ice responds quickly to a warming climate. The Arctic sea ice cover in late summer is about half what it was in the late 1970s when reliable records began. Using climate models, we cannot explain this ice loss with natural variability alone. Sea ice loss is having huge impacts on the Arctic. Remember, Arctic sea ice responds quickly to changes in climate forcing. If we reduce greenhouse gases, sea ice loss is reversible on human timescales. This is good news for polar bears. If we reduce greenhouse gases, their sea ice habitat will come back. But sea ice is not the only part of the cryosphere that's melting. Greenland is a big ice sheet that is melting. And melting from Greenland has impacts well beyond the poles. When Greenland melts, sea level rises everywhere. Sea level rise impacts all people because so many population centers and infrastructure is near the coasts. Hundreds of millions of people globally live within one meter of sea level. Another important thing to know, melting in Greenland is largely irreversible on human timescales. To understand why, let's balance the books of a glacier, accumulation from snowfall versus ablation from melt. It takes a long time to build up ice sheets from accumulation through snowfall, and it takes far longer to build those ice sheets than to melt them. Building an ice sheet from snow accumulation takes thousands of years, much longer than the timescales of a human lifetime. Because land-based ice sheets can melt and collapse so much faster than they can be rebuilt, reversing sea level rise from ice sheets in our lifetimes is largely impossible. To summarize, when sea ice melts, there is no sea level rise. In contrast, when land ice melts, sea level rises. In addition to land ice melting, thermal expansion of the ocean also causes sea level rise in a warming world. Melting ice has real consequences, and you might wonder if ice loss is reversible. Melting of land ice, like in Greenland, is irreversible on human timescales. In contrast, sea ice loss is reversible on human timescales. Changes to this cryosphere have important impacts on ecosystems everywhere.